let's talk about transformation because I, I believe this is the next step, the next age. If you take a look at Pine and Gilmore and their contribution in, in the Harvard Business Press, they remind us that there have been stages in the evolution of the economy. A few years back, we were in the expo nami, the experiential economy. But if we look back to the beginning of mankind, we were farmers. We were gathering, harvesting, and extracting commodities, making goods. Then in the 80s, 1980s, it was all about service. Service had to be included. I even remember someone wearing a badge saying, give me good service, and no one gets hurt. Um, then it was about staging experiences, because everyone was delivering services. Especially in our industry, when hot springs, and especially the spa, the, the spa staff, the staff, working there for 10, 15, 20 years, and you mentioned massage <coughs> factories or treatment factories in the socialist uh, era in uh, Central Europe, and we, we still have that in France. In some properties, no names, no finger pointing, we still have people, staff, which believe that their uh, duty to the guests is just to show them the way into the room, ask them to undress, put some mud wrap on them, or shower them with the, with the Scottish hose, do all kinds of treatments, and then just leave. And it's just next, 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 and you have hundreds of people on that day being treated. Now, delivering the service is not enough. It was about staging the experience. And we had a lot of places doing full moon activities, um, new moon activities, um, sunrise, sunset, all kinds of activities so that there could be an experience and people could tweet about it, blog about it, and uh, tell their friends. There are three Fs, friends, family, and Facebook. Now it's about guiding transformation. Maybe the, there's a beautiful quote uh, that says, when we meet someone, we only see half of them. We have no clue of the inside, in, inner battles that are at stake, and we have no clue about the aspirations. Um, I believe it could be interesting if our staff started asking, why are you coming here, besides or beyond the relaxation, or the, relaxa the relaxing property, the relaxation, the, the treatments, the social activity. Is there a specific reason within that would make you come back over and over again? And Selling experiences is one thing, and usually they sell extremely well with um, gift certificates. And a lot, of, um, a lot of properties have guests that come maybe once or twice a year. How can we have them come over and over again with programs? This, I believe, defines in a way what we do or what we should achieve in a very simple sign. What do you see? Smile, 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 smile face. face. Or, a smile smile. Or, a or a not so smiley face. The thing is, you decide. It's entirely up to you. Whatever life throws in your way, you decide. Whether you're going to smile at it and think it's an opportunity to grow, to uh, be more creative. Stress is not a disease, it's an uh, adaptation phase. But when you start stressing over things, and over and over again, this is when the body and the chemistry of the body changes. We've seen photos of that. So when you realize that whatever life throws at you can change the chemistry of your body, you can change it for you in this room as people, for your teams, for your guests. And maybe this is something that we should be helping with the educational part, but the exciting, the engaging, the fun educational part. Someone said this morning, everyone knows from Google or friends or common sense what to do to live a healthy life or a healthier life, but do we actually do that? Einstein gave this wonderful equation about energy and how it can be evaluated. I believe the people coming to our um, properties, facilities, are not so much interested in this. This is beyond them. 
They're interested in this. How do I get to me elevated? <coughs> through wearable texts, through fitness apps, uh, through educational programs. Me. It's also about energy. Is it, is it stress management programs, time management programs we're supposed to deliver to people, or is it more emotion management programs? How to deal with those emotions when they arrive? Are you going to go with them? If the wind blows and blows into your sail, are you going with it, or are you steering in the direction where you want to go? This can help. This, in a way, can be derived in different programs dealing with vitality and serenity. Those two poles, yin yang. Serenity and vitality and how to manage those. Interesting to see, especially in France, how some spas are now transitioning to wellness, little by little. Understanding, and these are the three words that were um, presented by the International Spa Association, ISPA, at least uh, six or seven years ago. What are the key three drivers for people to go into spas and maybe to come back? They came up with this, pleasure, definitely, indulgence, and we all, we, we all saw that uh, many years ago. You, you, you deserve it, come and pamper, this is your time, me time. The escape, checking out, uh, and this is when we had those massages from around the world. Um, spas and salons started to become almost like uh, travel agencies, delivering destinations with still travel, uh, traveling in your mind, traveling through your sensations, through different protocols, without the jet lag. This is why we had so many different massages from around the world. But actually, the one big reason that makes people come, and especially come back, especially when they have to um, assess where they're going to spend 60 euros or 90 euros for one hour, or maybe 150 euros, for that matter, for one hour, uh, for a treatment. Where do I put this money? Is it something that I'm going to share with my partner, with my spouse, and we're going to have a nice dinner, or am I going to do that for me? Work shows efficient. Now, if you go from pleasure to prevention, if you go from checking out to checking in with mindfulness, and if you go from work to transformation, you get, you get people's attention. From relaxation to optimization, enjoying a moment or changing habits, being passive, and becoming active, having a break away from problems or finding a place where you can finally address them with the guidance of people. And later on, Brooke is going to touch on positive psychology, which has a great, great future in our industry. An appetite to eat better at a spa with spa cuisine that we had. These slides you can have after, of course. Yeah. But, but, but now that you have this, you know, you know you can do things with your phone and you're actually doing it. An appetite to eat better or a yearning to cook better when you come home, hence those classes. Is it just about chilling with your friends or is it about stimulating creativity? Ah, I'm longing to see examples of places, spas, that will actually say, come. And what you're going to experience is going to change the day after that, especially if you're active, um, deep into business, being an executive. What you will feel is all of a sudden distance from what's happening to you right away. Take a distance. And then maybe you'll be able to have those aha moments and make those adjustments in your personal life, professional life, so that the decisions that you're going to take after you see us have an impact and uh, a ripple effect to all the people that are going to meet you. I believe this is what we're here for. Maybe that's just me, but I believe not. Interesting to see that in Brazil, Curotel, uh, iconic uh, Medispa, is saying the best investment you can do this year is investing in yourself. Six senses. I wanted to include a slide about you, but the, the, um, Goko and, and Glen Ivy, but because you spoke so eloquently about Glen Ivy, I thought, you know. Um, six senses. Decided in, in 2015 to systematize, systemize, systemize uh, the evaluation, the conversation. And I believe, um, 
I believe instead of having everything scripted and turning it into an SOP, not just a standardized operational procedure, but a sanitized operational procedure, it should be a conversation. Very interesting to see that uh, hospitality um, called Utker, Utker Collection says, these are our SOPs. This is the minimum things that you have to do, minimum standards that we expect you as one of the hotel staff or spa staff to deliver <laughs> with the guest. Now, what's interesting is that wherever you see white space around it is where the communication and the conversation starts. What's written is the minimum. What's not written is what's going to happen. When you have a, a script, but then there's interaction. Something's bound to happen. This is where we want you to have this gem. Um, and, and when you saw the, the chart, um, where experience was, everyone wanted to understand what the customer relationship management was, what the guest experience management was. Interesting to see that Six Senses took it one step further with guest experience makers. Once, you, once your staff sits down, looks at the, the how do you say, there's, there, there's usually a book that, that, that people write on with referrals or the, the comments that they leave on TripAdvisor. When you sit down and take a look at what has wowed your guests in the past, you understand what wowed a certain category, the newcomers or the regulars or the aficionados, what, did, what, what actually wowed them. And if you understand and then you recognize in the eyes or the behavior of someone that type of uh, guest from his or her behavior, well, maybe what wowed you could wow you. Maybe not, but at least I'll try. And I, uh, since I know that you're going to be with us for a few nights, hence a few days in your program, how about we try to sprinkle those wow moments from before arriving until they depart? So with this program, systemizing a conversation and making an assessment, evaluate, checking the vitals, body composition, metabolism, oxygen distribution, and it, it's really subjective also. How do you feel? How do you sleep? You know, tell me more about your lifestyle. Then you have data about this. It's subjective, but at least. And then there is a recommendation that is done. The interesting part is almost every property that I know, spa says, there should be a prescription, there should be a recommendation. Maybe the fact that there's a computer, that it's analyzed, that it's just in half an hour, it's a friendly conversation, but at least there's a computer, there's some data, and then you're going to turn the, the screen around and you're going to show me a few things about me. Ooh, you know, the, 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 there's this saying about mirror in the mirror, mi mirror, mirror on the wall. What the heck happened? Um, <laughs> From this conversation and from this evaluation, there is a recommendation of one spa treatment, one uh, movement activity you should do. It's not fitness, it's not exit, it's movement. It can be joyful, it can be playful, it's about the flow. With these recommendations for the, the, the next three days that you spend with us on the property, this is just a recommendation, but the, the guests believed in it so much that it generated, on an average, $500 extra per stay, per guest. They ran about a thousand um, recommendations of those, so that's in one year an extra half a million right there. And they're still rolling it out. I changed some slide of the presentation during the break because with the information that we got, I, I thought that I'd, I'd like to chip in what France can bring to the conversation. And when I, when I say France, it's just, not just little me, 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 but it's an association. La Confédération Nationale des Établissements Thermaux, the National Confederation of Thermal Establishment. That has about, oh, about 100 uh, thermal centers, is seeing an increase in uh, guest not just showing up for a day, it's not just a day visit, it's just, not just a day pass to take uh, the waters for two and a half hours. These are people who are prescribed by a doctor an 18-day cure. You mentioned 28 days uh, in, in, in the olden days. We still have that. And France, um, there was a time in France when thalassotherapy treatments were reimbursed by Social Security. 
and also thermal treatments. And then all of a sudden, it was decided by a government to no longer reimburse thalassotherapy treatments, saying, well, we're not so sure about it. It's nice to bathe in, in saline water, but can you actually <laughs> prove that it's doing something? And the operators of thalassotherapies couldn't. So they went into really dark, dark times. And they revamped everything, and they added the spa component to be thalasso and spa. And then they saw a revival, especially with uh, uh, two or three day uh, stays. But the thermal, um, the thermal establishment said, we need to do something. And they decided, and it started with a conversation, just like you're starting it, um, and, and, and that's fantastic. They, they, they said, how about each of us operators, 102, for every guest we have for 18 days, paid 65% by the Social Security, what if we chipped in two euros into a common account and we invest that money, those two euros per people, that's about one million euros per year, into research, so that we can prove to the government that we have, um, we render a medical service that helps people to take less medication, less pharmaceutical help, less rehabilitation with physiotherapists, less need of someone to help them when they're back home to assist them in their daily lives. Um, just also to, to mention, you said that 25% of the people coming to uh, Peninsula Hot Springs say they have back problems. In France, this is the number one big time reason why to go to, uh, to a thermal uh, facility. Interesting to say that psychomatic, 1.7%, is also proving that actually you mentioned depression being the number one um, uh, drama. Yeah. Um, it, it actually helps, and people take less antidepressants. Now, with about 10 million invested in research, there's huge data that has been written in French and English, because they realized that if they only wrote in French, only French people could, could assess the value of that. It is written in, in, uh, in English. It has been published in very well-respected also publications. And these are, I, I introduced you to that man, uh, Claude Eugène Bouvier, uh, when you were in Paris. I believe we should reconnect with them, with CNET, and also with um, Thierry Dubois, who used to be the president of the CNET and is now the president of the European Spa Association for all Central and Eastern Europe. What Thierry is going to try to achieve in the, in the four years of his presidency, and he's starting already to campaign on this, to say, we have an example that worked. In France, we chipped in two euros, easy, for whoever came. Who is ready to chip in in Hungary, in uh, Romania, in wherever you are? And if you want to chip in, we have bigger data, and we share that. And that helps, especially because last June, there was um, a big, big meeting at the National Assembly in France. This is when the, the congressmen and congresswomen can say, we continue supporting thermal medicine. And this is the, the word they use, it's not just wellness treatments, or thermal treatments, it's wellness, it's, it's thermal medicine for them. There's a doctor, there's a procedure, it's reimbursed. They said, not only does the National Assembly in France encourage to continue for the um, Social Security to reimburse uh, 65%, but they also now encourage the, the um, secondary insurance companies that people pay, that, that, that pay the little, yes, that usually pay for 35% extra so that it costs zero for the people to come. Well, they didn't discourage those private insurances to pay, and some did, and especially for the, the wealthier people. Now they're saying we should encourage all private insurance companies to do that so that more and more people. And that reminds me of the example of Rotorua in, uh, maybe I don't say it right, but in New Zealand, when, when they realized that with an aging population, either you continue to pay ludicrous amount of money to see doctors and, and take medication, or you also use thermal medicine and you see a sharp decrease, about one-fourth of the actual cost. Um, in the search of definitions, I'd like to suggest um, a little, you know, for your consideration. Health 
as a definition by the World Health Organization, but maybe health can be considered as a relationship between your body and a doctor. That's health at one point or another. Wellness is a relationship between your body and yourself before you go to see a doctor. And maybe we can, you know, build on that. Um, I'd like to give you more information about the revolution that's happening in France, but it's a revolution that's in the making. In 2018, um, two, two cities are going to be on the forefront saying we want a new generation of thermal centers, not just the thermal center in the city, you go, you take your apartment and you take your treatments, but actually connected with the ecosystem of everything that can be done. You mentioned uh, walking and bathing, riding and bathing, they're having the same conversation right now. How can tourism mix with thermal tourism, historic, uh, cultural, gastronomy? Um, and what's interesting is that Swiss, uh, Switzerland are, is doing exactly the same thing in the National, the, 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 the national um, Tourism Institute or office in Switzerland is also thinking of this. They will call this Station de Pleine Santé so that you achieve a higher state of well-being or wellness, whatever phrase you want to use. I have two more slides very quickly, because usually I like to start the presentations with why. We all know the why, but I wanted to share with you my little why of why I'm, I'm in here with you today, telling you about what I think we should be doing. This comes from Canada. <coughs> From the Heart Stroke Foundation, just one minute of time. What your last 10 years look like? Will you be quick enough for a game of tag with your grandchild? Strong enough to embrace every moment? I didn't want to ruin the, the good mood we had today, but the, this is my why. I've lost too many friends to cancer, too many friends to, uh, and of all ages, you know. It, it doesn't take someone to be an alcoholic or a chain smoker to, to leave and depart too early. Uh, 2010, uh, the World Health Organization said roughly 58 million people died on 2010. 35 million of them died prematurely of non-transmittable diseases linked to lifestyle. Man, transformation. How can we transform that? How can, how can we have an impact on those numbers? Last slide before I pass it on to Brooke. This, let me take you to beautiful Cyprus, Limassol, uh, to a place run by our good friend George Tavellis. Um, George runs owns and runs Sanctum Spa Fitness. It's a spa, it's a fitness, it's a hair salon. They have a pool and it's not thermal, but they're into transformation, wellness or well-being, however you want to use it. This is a, a small testimony, uh, testimonial, we say, uh, from Daphne. Daphne is 27 years old. Um, Daphne was brought to Sanctum last January by her mother because Daphne at 27, about a meter 65, which is what, five feet, you know, it's about average size, was weighing 35 kilos. Daphne uh, was anorexic and her mother, who is a member of this club, said, I should be taking my daughter to the hospital now. She should be intubed, she should be uh, fed with the drip, she's, she's in a very precarious position and the doctor says it's not healthy for her to not be medicated and treated with us, otherwise you're going to lose her. 
I'd like to try one last thing because she knew the team. She knew they were working with the nutritionists. She knew the coaches. She said, can, can you try to uh, rekindle the flame within my daughter so that she wants to accept her body as she is and enjoy life? Uh, someone said, life is too beautiful and too precious just to be lived. It should be celebrated. Can you help my daughter do that? And so they did. Before running, she walked. Um, before eating, she had a special meal plan. She came in every day. This is what she wrote last May. Last May, she was 46 kilos. In a few months, she felt comfortable with herself. And now she is modeling. She's doing beauty pageants, not just to be the most beautiful girl, but just to show people what a girl who hated her body can do now that she's comfortable with it. She says, you changed my life. I believe this is the transformation we, we want to achieve. Thank you so much.